Hello. Hello to everyone who uh, joined this uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Michal Rawotka uh, and I'm a technical lead at the, the CAM group. And uh, today uh, I'm going to present the, the Campbell REST uh, API. So uh, why would you use the, the, the Campbell API at all? So uh, currently, uh, that the Campbell distributes data using three uh, channels. The first one is uh, uh, just a, our website, which you can use to, to search and explore uh, chemical data. Uh, the, the, the second one is, is API itself, and the, the third one is uh, FTP uh, downloads. So those, those channels have different uh, characteristics. So uh, you use websites, probably if, uh, um, if you want to check something uh, without downloading the whole, the whole uh, da database, but it can be really slow to uh, check lots of compounds one, one by one. On the other hand, the, the, A the API uh, can be used for fetching data in, in, in batch, uh, but it's not quite as fast as the FTP download. So the problem with downloads is that you need to provide your own infrastructure to, to run um, database, uh, database engine. So uh, API can be considered as a, as a kind of a sweet spot between your technical knowledge and the, uh, the, the speed of uh, accessing the, the data. Uh, so what are the web services? So the Wikipedia uh, definition says that a web service is a method of communication between two electronic devices over a network. And WC3 definition is pretty much the, uh, the, the same. So this, this means that web services, the, the API is mostly built for, for machines, for machine to machine interaction but it still can be uh, human readable if you, if you need to, to debug your scripts because uh, the API is mainly used in scripts and, and application that can uh, consume uh, API. Uh, it can be used to fetch data in, in bulk and it is web friendly, which uh, I hope I'll be able to, to show uh, later slides. So, so where, where to start? So there are three main starting points when um, learning about the Campbell API. So the, the first one is the main API website. Uh, let, me, let me show this. Uh, so probably I need to, to share the whole screen. Yes. If I click, this is the, this is the main uh, website uh, about Campbell Web Services. So you can, you can see what, uh, what kind of uh, endpoints we, we provide and very, very detailed documentation about, uh, well, formats, uh, pagination, filtering, things that I, I will cover later. And along with lots of, lots of examples, we have currently around 50 uh, examples of how to use the, the API, uh, as well as some other links to, to publications. So this is one uh, good source of uh, knowledge. Um, let me just switch to, yeah. The second one is a, is a live, live documentation. So uh, this, this, this website uh, has a list of all endpoints avail uh, available uh, from, from the, the Campbell API. So for example, you can, you can open one, uh, choose, the, choose the format, and from your browser, make a, make a request and see what is the answer made for, uh, given by, by the API. And now you can copy it to your clipboard and, and use it later. So this is uh, the best thing if you, if you uh, 
don't have any any other software, if you don't want to write your code, but you just want to play around and explore uh, all the all the endpoints that we uh, that we are currently offering. So so yes, that's the that's the second uh, resource. Um, and the third one is a is a source code itself. So the the, the code of uh, Camel API is open sourced, uh, so and hosted on GitHub. So you can you can see it, you can fork it, uh, you can create your own uh, local instance of, of the API because we we provide the the data as well. Uh, so so yes, you can you can create your own uh, local instance. For example, if you uh, if you are working behind the, the, the firewall and you still need the, the access to, to the API, you can, you can do it yourself. Also, if you, if you find any, any issue, like a, like a software bug, you can, you can report it on, on GitHub or uh, just send in email to camp help uh, at EBI. Uh, okay, so uh, these, are, these are the three uh, Main points of where, where where you can you can start learning about the API. Now some 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 basics. So uh, currently uh, the Camel database contains uh, about 1.7 million compounds and about 14 million activities. So you can't get them at all using a single HTTP request to the API. Uh, the API uh, serves the data that is paginated. Uh, so it's served in, in chunks, and those, those chunks are wrapped in uh, envelopes. So this, this envelope provides some meta information uh, telling you uh, which page you are currently seeing, what is the, the link to the next and previous page, how many uh, objects are on, the, on this page, and so on. So you can, uh, you can adjust the, the default the, 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 the page size. Uh, the default page size is 20, so you will see 20 objects per, per page, so 20 objects per answer from the server, and it can be adjusted up to uh, 1,000. And there are two uh, main parameters that, that can control uh, paging. One is, is limit, and the second one is called offset. So um, this, is, this is how uh, how you can use them. So offset is the, uh, the index of the, of the first, uh, Object that will uh, that will be shown uh, on the on the current uh, page. So and the, the objects are are counted from from zero, uh, and the limit is a is a size of the of the page. So on this example, if we have an offset of four, the the, the first the first object visible on the on the page will will be an object uh, with the index equal to four and seven objects will be will be served on the on the current on the current page um, yes so this is this is how uh, uh, the the answer from the server uh, looks like uh, so well some some things here are, are simplified uh, not to obscure the, the the most the most important parts which uh, which is which is the page meta information. So as you can see, uh, you can you can see the current value of limit and offset parameters, and the the link to the next page, uh, link to the previous page, and the total count of uh, of the object. So if I uh, if I click here, yeah, not sure if you can see it. Yeah, this is the actual uh, response from the from the server when we ask for a molecule endpoint. So uh, these are 20 first objects, 20 first molecules, and uh, at the bottom and there is this, this meta information about this page showing that we have around 70 millions of compounds. Uh, this is the first page, so there is no previous page, and this is the link to the, to the next. There are uh, 20 uh, objects on, on this page, and the offset is, is zero, so this is this is the, the the first the first page. Okay, so going back to slides, the next the next important feature of uh, Campbell API is is filtering. So when you have a URL, you can you can add a question mark and then a set of 
set of filters. So, for example, uh, this is a way to. The, there are three examples on, on this on this slide. The, fir the first one is selecting all approved drugs. So the molecule endpoint has a field called max phase, and all the all the drugs have uh, approved drugs have a max phase equal to to four. So if I append the question mark and then the name of the filter, so max phase, uh, and then I provide the value equal to four, I will select uh, only the the results that answer this this query. So only uh, as you can as you can see in the in the page meta, there are only 3,916 uh, compounds uh, that satisfy this requirement. So the compounds that have a max phase equal to uh, to four. Uh, another another example here uh, is is just to show you that the uh, uh, the filters can be can be joined together. So if you use ampersand, uh, then you can you can uh, provide um, an, another filter. And this this filter is actually um, a bit more complicated because then it says max max phase equal to four, and then uh, we are accessing molecule properties, which is a nested object inside the molecule, and then uh, within this nested object, there is a there is a field called ar ar aromatic rings, and then we want to uh, get all the compounds that have this aromatic rings greater than or equal to two. So now, if I if I click on this, I will I will see that the the number of compounds selected is even lower. So it's 1,376. And these are all the compounds with max phase equal to four, and with number aroma, uh, number of aromatic rings greater or equal to uh, to two. Yeah. Uh, so now you can you can see that there are different types of filters, and I will co cover this on the next slide. And uh, the the third example is selecting all the targets with the name starting from uh, serotonin. So. Uh, the, the target endpoint has a, a preferred name field, and if we apply the filter called I starts with, so starts with, uh, but case insensitively with serotonin, then we can we can see, and uh, as you can see, the re it, it looks different because I, I decided not to specify a format, and now the default format is XML, so this is the the XML output, where whereas this is JSON uh, output, yeah. Okay. So, as you as you noticed, there are uh, many filter filter types that you can you can apply uh, for for filtering. The default one is is exact. So if you don't specify any any filter, so you just say uh, like like in this in this first example, max phase equal to four. This this means that uh, max phase it is this is a, Equivalent to max phase underscore underscore exact equal four, uh, but you can you can you can modify this and add other filters. For example, this GT greater than equal. So uh, the the whole the whole list the whole list is here. Uh, if you have the copy of this of the slide, uh, these are actually links to some to some examples. So for example, this is the the example of uh, selecting all the assays with description, where description contains case insens in insens insensitively the, the, the word uh, toxicity. Uh, and there are, there are other examples. I think the, mm, one, the, one of the most, most useful uh, filters is, is search. Um, and it's important because uh, it's not quite a filter, so that the syntax is a bit, bit different. So you say that target, so the, the, the name of the of the endpoint, and then slash dot dot, uh, dot, dot JSON, uh, so to specify format, and then uh, as a, as a query of this URL, you 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 provide the the search term. So this is this is different. Uh, this is because this is not really a um, a filter, but uh, we are we are using uh, Solar Index 
to 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 to, to perform the, the the fuzzy searching for this for this term in the uh, in the textual fields. So this this can be useful and and usually it's it's much faster uh, than uh, contains or I, I contains filter and as in this example this is especially useful for searching targets by uh, their synonyms or uh, gene gene names. Okay, moving forward, uh, another another feature of the Campbell API is is ordering. So uh, you can order results by uh, some um, some fields. So again, there are three three examples here. You can we can order the the compounds. Uh, by the the molecular weight. Um, yes. So if I if I look for uh, full molecular weight, it is it is ordered ascending. With the with, with the the lightest compound being a, just a carbon, uh, but you can you can also uh, if if you if you start the uh, the order by parameter the uh, the, the the name of the uh, of the field uh, by minus that 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 means that you want uh, to to reverse the the ordering so so you will uh, sort uh, the the results descending and uh, obviously, it makes sense to uh, to, to join the, the the sorting. So uh, you can you can order first by, uh, uh, for example, number of aromatic rings ascending, and then uh, by by the by the molecular weight descending. And again, as with filters, you you join uh, those parameters with ampersand. Okay. Uh, another another uh, aspect of the uh, of the API is what what kind of uh, formats uh, are supported by by the API and how how uh, how can we uh, how can we get them? So so one one way uh, of specifying the the, the formats is so for for example if you are you uh, looking at the Molecule endpoint. The, the the one the one way is to um, to end the URL with dot and extension. So, for example, dot JSON will will give us uh, JSON uh, the, the result in a JSON format. Dot XML will give us the result in a XML format. The default format. So, if I if I omit this, the default format is XML. Another another way would be uh, Adding the ex explicit uh, format parameter, and then so for example, format equals to JSON. We'll see this formatted in the in the in the JSON. Um, now there is there is a third way by by providing the the the, the header, uh, but I will I will cover this 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 later. Now I just wanted to, to show you what, what kind of format. So uh, each endpoint uh, can give you any, uh, the output uh, in JSON and XML, but additionally for, for molecule, it makes sense to, uh, to ask for SDF. So this is the, the chemical format. So you will, you will get the, the, the raw, the raw uh, output in a SDF file and uh, again, the output is paginated, so you you will only get the, the first 20 compounds. But again, you can you can uh, add uh, offset or limit limit parameters. So if I add limit equals to 1,000, I will get the SDF file containing uh, one 1,000 of compounds. And because SDF format is really simple, it's it's very easy to go page by page and and stick. Uh, stitch this together. Uh, so yes, so for, for molecule we additionally offer, offer the, the SDF. Uh, sorry. Uh, and for, for uh, individual molecules, 
uh, we, we also offer a PNG and, and SVG format. So, for example, if I, if I get the individual molecule, I can get JSON or XML, uh, but I can end this with a PNG and I will get raster image or SVG and I will, I will get a vector based uh, image. But there is, there is also dedic dedicated uh, image endpoints which, uh, which will allow you to, to specify the rendering engine and you have a choice of Indigo or Ardekit and uh, the, background, the background color. Uh, okay. Another, another thing is uh, what, what kind of HTTP methods are, are supported. So um, as, you can, as you can see from the, from the browser, if we are using the URL, this is the, the get, get method. And uh, this is the, the example of using the, the, the Unix tool uh, called uh, curl to, to get the um, uh, data from API using, using this, this URL. So, well, this is really straightforward if you are using get. You, you, just, you can just copy the, the URL from, from, from the, the, the browser uh, and the, then just, yeah, that's not a, the best example because this is, this is image, but you can, you can copy, you can copy this URL and say curl and, and specify this, this URL. So, so this is, this is easy, but the, the, the problem is that, uh, uh, sometimes the URL con contains, um, um, special characters and uh, Kur can interpret this, the special characters as a globing parameters. Uh, so curl al allows you to, to get many, many UR URLs at once. So you need to disable this by adding the minus G uh, flag. Uh, but also you can, you can use the, the, the post. Uh, the, the post here is used in the context of, of, uh, of get. What, the, what does it mean? So in the, in the rest word, there are, um, uh, for for basic uh, verbs and post is using for creating objects, but here in our our API is read only. So we are we are not using post to create any object. You can't create object. Uh, you, we are using post just for convenience because uh, there, there are um, some some parameters that are that can exceed the, the the maximum length of the URL. And this is this is when you can use post, which doesn't have any limitation because you don't append the, the parameters to the URL, but you send this in the in the request body. So these are these are examples of how how can use the curl tool to to make a post request. And so uh, well, there are, there are some some important things. So you need to add the minus x parameter to to specify explicitly that you are using post because curl as by by default uses uses get. And then you need to you need to add the special header, ht, x HTTP method overwrites equals to get, uh, basically saying I'm I'm using post in the context of get. I want to get some data from a Campbell server, and the the only reason I'm using post is because it's more convenient. The content content type is uh, now now we. In the in the minus d parameter, we want to we want to send um, the the actual payload, actual parameters, and um, by by specifying the the content type, we say this payload is uh, is in in a JSON format. Uh, other, otherwise, the, the the server will interpret this as a, a, a www form uh, format, which is the, the the next the next example. So you can omit the content type, but then the, the, the payload format will, will look uh, slightly different. Okay, so this is how, how you, can, uh, you can interact with the API using get and post uh, using the, 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 the curl uh, tool. Uh, I think it's important if you, if you are using the uh, web, web browser, uh, the, by, by default the web browsers uh, prevent you from fetching the, the, the resources from, uh, from ad different, different do domains and uh, the, the Campbell API uh, sub supports both, both techniques to, to solve this. There are two 
most most popular uh, methods to, to to overcome this problem. One is called course, and the second one is called JSONP. I won't be explaining this because if you know about this, you, you probably understand how they work and what is the difference. Uh, here, the, the the message is that uh, the Campbell API so, so supports both methods. Uh, one of one of the one of the tricky uh, things is are, are smiles. So smile smiles is a way of uh, the, the linear notation of compounds, but they often contain a special characters that have a special meaning in uh, in the URLs. For example, uh, hash has a special meaning in URL, and by default, uh, nothing that the, uh, the the content uh, that is put after the hash is not sent to to a server. So uh, in order to uh, find a workaround uh, for for this, you can you can just uh, encode the, your URL using the percent encoding. So, for example, the the hash sign will be translated to percent twenty three. Or, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can use just post type of query, and then you don't you don't have to uh, to care about uh, encoding at all because. Um, the, the parameters are not appended to URL, so they won't be interpreted as a part of URL. They will be just sent in the, in the request body. Uh, we also have a Python client, uh, so to, to, to interact with the, the Camel API from, uh, from Python, and then you can forget about uh, all, all these caveats. You, you don't have to, to remember if you are using post or get, what is the, the URL to the root URL to the API, uh, that the client handles this all for you. So it gives you a nice nice abstraction. So for example, if you want to uh, get a free, a free molecules identified by the Campbell IDs, uh, this is the, the, the first example. You just say molecule gets and then specify a, a list of Campbell IDs. Or if you want to filter, you say molecule.filter, and then in the in the parameter of this function, you, you specify uh, the type of the um, of the filter, just as we discussed, and then you can you can join, you, ch you can change the filters by adding dot filter, dot filter uh, to, to get the results. Uh, and there are there are uh, some, some other examples for for example that this this line con converts uh, you, you uses the utility methods that we expose to, to, to convert smiles to a, to a mole file uh, and then uh, breaks the bonds using the, uh, the standardizer or uh, converts the, the, the mole file to, to uh, compute the fingerprints of the mole file. Okay, uh, some, some examples. Uh, that are that are linked to this, this presentation include um, scripting in Bash, Python, and R. Uh, show some ba basic um, how how some web widgets can be created, and show some some example of interacting with other applications such as Slack or or Nime or Jupyter or I, I Python notebook. Uh, so I, I prepared the the, the free uh, scripts. Uh, and they, they they basically answer the same the, the same task. They read the CSV file uh, that contains the molecule IDs and creates the output CSV file with a mapping between the, the compound and related targets that that can be optionally uh, filtered by organism. Um, and those those three um, scripts are written in uh, different uh, scripting languages. One is written uh, in Bash, the second one is written in R, the third one is written in Python. Uh, so, for example, and they are they are um, hosted on on GitHub Gist, so you can you can look. They are heavily uh, commented, so you can you can see uh, what what is what is going on. But ba basically, you you can't you can't do a lot in 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 Bash. If you are if you are using Bash, it's hard to to handle pagination. It's even uh, the, the simplest task. For for example, uh, parsing the, the JSON result is 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 is, uh, is hard. So this this require a tool called uh, J, JQ in order to parse and extract some important information from um, uh, from JSON. Uh, R on the other hand uh, handles pagination easily. Uh, handles uh, uh, command line parameters. Uh, and it uses two two libraries, JSON Lite and HDR. 
and it it does exactly the, the same the same thing that the Python equivalent, uh, which which uses the arc arc parse and the and the and the client. So you can you can easily see what is the difference of using and not using the the client and how to how to interact with the uh, API using R and Python. As a bonus, because the, the Bash script is simple, I, I wrote an, another script in, in Bash that uh, reads the again the, the, the compounds in a CSV format and all, and downloads uh, the images to uh, to a fold, local fold, folder called called images. Okay, uh, web widgets. Um, so the the API can be can be easily used to to, to create a Quite sophisticated web widgets, and this is the uh, the prototype of the uh, new uh, our, the new interface, new Campbell interface that we are working on, and this is entirely built with the data uh, served by the by the API. And those those widgets are embeddable, um, so you can you can you can make a collection of reusable uh, web components using using the API, and uh, and again. Uh, in the bottom of this of the slide, I, I created a free JS Fiddle examples uh, that you can you can uh, use to, to see how to make an AJAX call uh, to get uh, an image uh, in the raster format, in the SVG format, and then since SVG is is vector uh, is a vector format, so it can be animated and you can you can see how to how to animate the the compound image as a as a Funny examples, not, nothing, nothing really, nothing really useful. Uh, another example of, of of using the API is is creating a bot. So this is uh, this is a Slack bot that that we that we created. So this is a Slack application, um, and in, in Slack uh, you can you can define some define some some custom uh, commands. So we created a, a command called cam, and then if you uh, if you say Cam aspirin. It will it will fetch. Yeah, this is hosted on Heroku, so it may not be that that fast. So sometimes I need to make a few tries to 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 uh, to run the machine. But once it's up, it's up. So this this resolves the name the aspirin looks looks this looks up this name in in Campbell and then creates a compound report card with the with the data from Campbell. And then you can you can you can provide uh, any identifier. So you can say Campbell and provide smice, inchi, inchi key, uh, or uh, Campbell uh, Campbell ID. So the API can be can be used easily to to interact with um, with applications that easily consume uh, RESTful API. And there is also a name name example. Um, so if you if you click if you have the copy of this presentation when you when you click. Uh, you will you will get the the example nine workflow uh, that you can you can you can see how how nine can can interact with uh, with the Campbell API. Last but not least, there is a, a Jupyter uh, or IPython egg example. Uh, sorry. So ag again, and we we are uh, in the MyCam repository. We have a collection of. Uh, IPython notebooks and the the, the, the note, notebook uh, number nine uh, is 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 dedicated to uh, to web services. So it um, it covers the, the most important uh, methods pro provided by by API, but also uh, shows you uh, what is the difference between using the Python client that we wrote and 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 using the the requests Python library uh, directly. Okay. Uh, so this is this is all. Uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, uh, feel feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Bye.